This is a fabulous book. Uh, the opening chapters, um, you reveal some information that I don't think I was aware of, uh, unless I hadn't read the right uh, newspapers. Uh, a situation with uh, General Haig that uh, surprised me, where he came to you in the last days of Mr. Nixon's administration and almost suggested uh, a pardon. Of course, that was a suspicion by uh, many, that there had been a deal sure. between you and uh, Mr. Nixon. Uh, would you just recall for us those yes. moments? Well, were were they shocking when you, when you heard Mr. Haig say that? You were the vice president at the time. It was August 1st, 1974, and uh, General Haig, who was President Nixon's uh, chief of staff, called me and said he had some very important information that he had to see me immediately. He came over that morning and generally told me that the so-called smoking gun uh, tape was about to be released uh, under court order and that the situation in the White House was just dissolving and that I should be prepared uh, within a relatively short period of time to assume the presidency. Uh, that shocked me because I had been assured by President Nixon many times that he knew nothing about the break-in, he had no part of the cover-up, and I generally, almost automatically, believe people, especially close friends of mine. He later came back, General Haig did that afternoon, and he said the circumstances have gotten worse than they were this morning. I want to bring you up to date. The circumstances are that President Nixon has about six options that have been discussed by the staff. He said, I just want to lay out for you what the uh, options might be for President Nixon. First, he could fight it through with a probable uh, impeachment in the House and a hard fight in the Senate, but probably uh, uh, he would end up being uh, thrown out of office. Secondly, he could have fought it uh, through at least the first step in the House of Representatives, maybe uh, agreed to a censor vote. Uh, he could have stepped aside, uh, the third option was stepping aside under the 25th Amendment and I would have been an acting president on a temporary basis. Another possibility, according to the advisors to President Nixon, uh, was that he would pardon all of the Watergate conspirators, including himself. And then the last option, which uh, somebody in the White House had suggested to Al Haig was that uh, he, Nixon, would step down and I, in return, would agree to pardon him. There was no discussion. Uh, I simply listened. I told Al, uh, not once but twice, particularly the next day when I called him back, I'll have no part of any recommendation. I don't want any of our conversation to give any uh, advice or counsel to President Nixon. I'm going to stay out of it, absolutely. Now, people say, well, there was a, a deal. That's absolutely untrue. And the best evidence of it, Merv, is that I write about it frankly in the book. Do you ever. And I actually went up and testified before a House committee on the judiciary, the first time in the history of this country that a president in office went up and testified before a congressional uh, committee. I was the first and thus far the only president. I wanted to lay the cards out, tell the story as it was, and if you're open and frank, as I think I've been in the book and in the testimony, I don't see how anybody could have any suspicions whatsoever.